And so, verse one, chapter 1, verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. And then skip down to 20. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. And so I'm going to hand it off to Tyler, who's going to run with it and give the word. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Frank are going to move this real quick if y'all don't mind. How y'all doing this morning? I said, how y'all doing this morning? There we go. Somebody's woke up. Anybody have coffee this morning? Yeah. Who all who have coffee this morning? Yeah. Y'all are my friends. Yeah. All right. First of all, Trent and I think it's Lilia and Ben and Matt and even Elizabeth, you guys did such a great job. Can we give them one more round of applause? <laughs> And man, that song, By and By, right? Such a great song. Circle Unbroken, was it called one more time? Will the circle be unbroken? Will the circle be unbroken? I love spaces and places like this where we get to talk and worship the Lord. And I just want to know real quick, I want to take a survey to see if I'm in good company or not. Anybody in here go to a family reunions, like family reunions type folks? Right, any type of large family gathering, right? Oh man, I love family reunions. And I, I, there's some part about family reunions that I don't like, but for, for the most part, I love family reunions, large family gatherings. I love the food, right? The macaroni and cheese, the green beans, the ham, the, you know, all that good stuff. Gotta love it. Uh, fried chicken? Oh Lord. Um, let me stop. And also love the family, right? We get to connect with people that, you know, you know, same blood, and you get to see people that you haven't saw in a long time. But what I don't like about family reunions is that little older, older, older <laughs> lady that always comes up to you and goes, Oh my gosh, is that you? <laughs> take a fish out of water and talk to it. Do you, do you think that the fish is surprised by the fact that it's no water? No. No. The fish would not be surprised <laughs> that it is in water. Fish are not surprised because they're in water because fish are made for water. And I think that we are often surprised by time because we're not really made for time. We're made for eternity. Amen. And furthermore, to spend eternity with God. Amen. And so, surprised by time, I, I love spaces and places like this where we can gather around and we can talk about heaven. And we can talk about, we can talk about by and by. We can talk about the hope and the future glory that, it, that is to come. And I love spaces and places where we can get together and get excited about that on Sunday. But I don't know about you, me personally, sometimes when I when I get into my Monday or my Tuesday, I'm not as excited because of the problems that come up in my week. Amen. Amen. I work at Office Depot and I'll just tell you that some of my problems are here in the audience today. <laughs> you guys about how to progress in your problems. How to progress in your problems. See, here's the thing. Jesus promised us that there will be trials and tribulations. Amen. And they come with life. But here's the thing I want you to know. If you're going to go through it, you might as well grow through it. Amen. 
Amen. I'll say it again for the people that listen in the back. I said, if you're going to go through it, you might as well grow through it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, we're in the book of Philippians today, and we're talking about Paul writes his letter to, to the church of Philippi, and, and the church that he planted in um, Philippi was the first church that he planted in Europe. And Paul planted several churches. Now, later on, after he planted that church, um, Paul got arrested. And he was put in jail, falsely accused, he was put in jail for preaching the gospel, for proclaiming the good news of Jesus. And so when the, when the, when the Philippians hear about this, they say, oh no, this is a problem. They think this is a setback for the kingdom of God, and rightfully so. I mean, if somebody were to text me tomorrow and say, hey, Pastor Kurt has been in jail, I'd go, oh, Lord. <laughs> that is, once you said that was a problem, I mean, what's going to happen with this? What's going to happen with that? What's going to happen to the church? I mean, you would think that's a problem, so I don't blame the Philippians for thinking this. And Paul, and Paul goes, you know what, they probably do think that this is a problem, so I'm going to go ahead and write them a letter and tell them about what has happened. Come on, tap your neighbor and tell them what had happened. Was. <laughs> He's going to tell them about what happened. Verse 12. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me. But here's the thing. Within these next couple of words, we see a shift. See, Paul doesn't go into giving them the intrinsics of the, of the situation, right? He doesn't go into giving them the details of the situation. He actually gives them an interpretation of the situation. Everybody say interpretation. interpretation. He gives them an interpretation of what has happened. Listen to this. He says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. It has really served to advance the gospel. He's talking about a deeper reality that his search, that his situation portrays to him. He's talking about a deeper truth than, this, than what his situation portrays to him. Because here's, the, here's what I know in just my short 19 years of living, here's what I observe, is that your life really isn't about what has happened to you. Your life is really about what it means to you. And Paul knows that what has happened to him has really served, will really serve to advance the gospel. See, Paul has every right to go, you know what, this sucks. <laughs> Paul has every right to go, you know what, this is, this is horrible, you know, um, I want to give up. Or, or, or he has every right to be negative because of the reality of this situation. But instead, if you look at verse 13, Paul says... Yes, and I will rejoice. What? <laughs> Paul, you're in jail. You've been falsely accused. You're in jail. You're in prison for preaching the gospel. Yet Paul says, yes, I will rejoice. Paul has the posture of praise. But how did he get that posture? Let me tell you how he got that posture. Paul's interpretation isn't determined by a situation. Paul's interpretation is determined by his faith. Amen. For every fear that you have, for every doubt that you have, for every anxiety that you have, for every problem that you have, there's an empty grave. Amen. There is a deeper reality than what you may currently be facing, and that is the reality that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He, just like He got out of the grave, He can also resurrect your situation. Amen. That's how you keep the posture of praise in your problem. So I just want you to implement that word throughout your week. You know, when something goes wrong and somebody asks you, hey, what happened? What, what went wrong? Your, your tire went flat? Your, the gear shift on your car won't change? What's going on? They ask you, this is not an opportunity for you to be negative and give them an and, and give them the intrinsics of your situation. This is an opportunity for you to give them an interpretation of your situation. Amen. My car breaks out? Okay. Well, yeah, I may need to ride to school, but you know what? I, I think this is the Lord working in my life. Amen. I think this is the Lord trying to show me that he's a provider. I think this is the Lord trying to show me that he's placed me in an awesome family that can help me with anything that I need help with. Does that make sense, guys? Clap once you hear me. 
Let's look at that other word. He says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served. Has really served. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that, tell me if I'm reading this right. Anybody have, has anybody heard of Romans 8.28 before? Okay, just, just correct, correct, me if I, correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> this is what I, this is what I And we know that for those who love God, some things work together for the good of those who believe and are called according to his purpose. Amen. 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 Okay, we'll be trying again. <laughs> and we know that for those who love God, the majority of things work together for the good of those who believe in our call. Okay. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Did I get it right that time? All things work together. Come on, say that with me. Work together. One more time. Work Paul says, I like this, in verse 
18. <clears throat> what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that I rejoice. What then? To give you a better meaning of what Paul means here, the uh, ample Bible, uh, Bible puts it this way. It says, what does it matter? And that's what I want to ask you here today because in times of problem, it is not time to focus, focus on your problem. It's actually time to focus on what really matters. Because problems are here to steal your focus. They want to steal your focus, but because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have a different interpretation, and that has, that has changed. What does it matter? What really matters to you? Um, the reason I keep staring down is because uh, I'm, I'm about to make a confession. <laughs> is that okay with y'all? Okay, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Don't judge me. The other day, yesterday actually, I was reading my Bible preparing to speak uh, from about 9 to the time I was about to go to work. And I was on YouTube because on YouTube there's like a timer thing that times me, so I like to time how long it takes me to say stuff or give an illustration or stuff like that. And so I was on the timer, but you know how on YouTube they have like the suggested videos over there on the side? <laughs> so I just looked over there and there was something about Trump. And so I was saying, I really should be focused on the word right now. But let me see what this video is about. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> I went and I watched the video and I said, oh my goodness. And then I watched another one about somebody else and I said, oh my goodness. And I started sending them to people and they started texting me back and I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? And, and, and I, all kind of chaos. And I let it into my world, and I, I just started getting really, really worried about all the things that were going on in our world and our nation. I just started reading comments from people from other nations, and I, I was just like, oh my God, what is going on? Problem after problem after problem. I see problem after problem after problem. And then the Holy Spirit said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked down at what? I looked down at verse 18. And it's kind of like this verse spoke to me and it said, what? What does it matter? Amen. Tyler Jenkins, you need to change your focus. Amen. You're focused on something that I have, you focused on something that I've got under control. I want you to focus on what I've given you to steward and I'm giving you an opportunity to, to speak tomorrow. So what are you doing focusing on something else? Focus on what really matters. Tyler, what really matters to you? And so at that time, I had to close the computer and get in the book. Amen. And so I'm here to ask you guys today, what really matters to you? Now, um, anybody, uh, I know all the fellows will understand, and ladies, please just give me grace if this is weird. <laughs> but um, fellas, there are the, these things in our, in our restrooms called... Um, urinals, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. Please stay with me, okay? Please stay with me. They're like, oh my, what is this man talking about? I promise when they come around. And now, so when I go to use the restroom, sometimes when I'm standing there, it's kind of like the wall starts moving towards me. <laughs> and I start moving towards the wall, and all of a sudden I have to just put my hand on the wall and, and finish whatever it is I'm doing. But anybody ever been there before? Okay, praise the Lord. I'm in good company. Praise the Lord. I thought I was going to be the only one. My goodness, thank you. Well, uh, brother in the back, and then you all should praise God you. Ladies, here's what you might understand. Anybody ever been driving and um, the car is maybe to your left, or it gets even worse when both of them move at the same time, but you're standing still and they both slowly start inching forward. And you're like, where am I going? I'm on the, the break, but I feel like I'm moving forward. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Looking to the right or to your left, what you focus on will get you in trouble. And so when I'm using the restroom, what I have to do is if I if I see my if I see the wall moving towards me, I put